Hello everyone, today we will convert the retopologized LOD3 character model we created last time into an LOD0 model. I've already loaded the MetaHuman LOD template into the scene. This template is included in the Mesh Warp tool, so you can load it from there. Now let's bring in the mesh we worked on last time. As I just mentioned, we will fully convert this model into an LOD0 model. We will use a tool we provide called Mesh Warp. This process is one of the most important steps for enhancing the character's quality. Please make sure to watch the video until the end. The Mesh Warp tool transforms the driver mesh into the shape of the target mesh while simultaneously deforming the driven meshes. It operates automatically based on Maya's proximity wrap and includes various custom logics that we have developed. The first thing we need to do is register the driver mesh. To convert LOD3 to LOD0, the driver mesh should be the LOD3 mesh provided by the template. After registering, you might notice the name is duplicated. Before registering the mesh, make sure to change the name to avoid any duplication in the scene. After renaming and re-registering, the mesh now displays correctly with a unique name. Since we're converting LOD3 to LOD0, the driven mesh will be the LOD0 mesh. This is because the LOD0 mesh needs to follow the LOD3 mesh. Next, the target mesh will be the LOD3 mesh we worked on in Wrap the 3 d In other words, the MetaHuman template's LOD3 mesh will transform into the LOD3 mesh we worked on, and the LOD0 mesh will transform along with it. Great. Once we perform the warp, you'll see that the template's LOD0 mesh has transformed into the shape of our character. But doesn't it look a bit off? The muscles are more pronounced, and the shape is very detailed. The chest looks distorted. I think the current form doesn't really suit this character. The situation is often referred to as the uncanny valley. This character doesn't look good when it's too realistic. So, let's adjust the warp settings to match the original as closely as possible. Select the mesh and navigate to the last tab in Maya's Attribute Editor. You'll see that it's linked to the Proximity Wrap node. Here, try changing the wrap mode from Offset to Snap. Then, you'll notice that the character's shape adheres closely to the target mesh, fixing the breast distortion issue. However, you may notice a slight reduction in volume as the character's shape adjusts. Let's address this by adjusting the parameters. The smooth influences value is set to 2. Increasing this value will make the transition smoother, but it may also reduce the volume of the shape. Having too low of a value may cause some wireframe flow issues in certain areas. Therefore, setting it to 1 seems like a good choice. Let's take a look. In the case of the fingers, there's a slight difference, but for the buttocks, well, there's not much difference from the original anymore. That's good. The polygons with the quad shape under the chin of the head are visible, aren't they? This phenomenon didn't occur when the wrap mode of the permixity wrap was set to offset mode earlier. However, now that we've set it to snap mode, the mesh is adhering closely to the original LOD3 model, causing those polygons with quad shape to be visible. We'll fix this issue from now on. These techniques will be very useful once you get the hang of them. Select the mesh under the Dell BD Scaled Set GRP item in the outliner. The meshes in this group are the ones undergoing real-time calculations by the Mesh Warp tool during the warp process. Select the mesh under the Dell group and apply Deform and Delta Mush. If you look into the Delta Mush attributes, you'll see various parameters provided. As you can see, there's a noticeable difference between having a delta mush value and not having one. However, this effect is similar to what we observed when using the wrap mode in offset mode. So here too, we'll gradually adjust the parameters to achieve the desired result. Let's start by reducing the value of the smoothing iterations and also decreasing the displacement value. Our goal for now is to prevent the creation of quad shapes on this character model. Additionally, we'll restrict the application of this delta mush effect to the facial area only. For now, after making these adjustments, 
Let's copy the mesh for each part for the purpose of replacing them later. First, I'll make a copy of the mesh in its estate before applying delta mesh, and I'll label it as body to indicate that it's intended for the body area only. Now I'll adjust the parameters for applying delta mesh to focus more on the head area. When adjusting these parameters, please focus on the neck area and the overall facial contour. We'll use the data copied for each part and blend them together later using the Mesh Warp tool. I'll also make a copy specifically for the head area, just like before. All right, let's focus on the eyelid area. It seems that there are sharp edges forming along the eyelid, right? We'd like to smooth out that area. Let's go back to the Delta Mush properties and adjust the parameters. For now, you can ignore other parts and concentrate only on the eyelid. We'll be replacing only that part later on. All right, I think that's about it. Eyelids can always be tricky, right? Let's go ahead and make a separate copy for the eyelids as well. Great, now we have separate meshes for the body, head, and eyelids. All right, let's proceed by navigating to the Mesh Edit Tool tab within the Mesh Warp tool. First, we need to load the reference mesh into the origin combined mesh slot. I'll use the modified body mesh as our reference mesh. Next, we will create a selection set. Select any of the three meshes and choose the vertices of the area you want to replace. In this case, since I want to replace the head area, I'll select the head vertices. Great, let's set the name for the selection set. Choose a name that is easy to identify and understand. After registering the set, you can select any mesh and double click the set item to automatically select the vertex. Remember, this vertex set is not restricted to a specific mesh. It can be used with any mesh that has the same topology. I see that there are quad shapes visible on the neck area as well. We need to include the neck area in the replacement. To do this, we should include the neck area in the previously registered set. Select the neck area along with the rest. And with the set item selected, click the Edit Selected Set button. This way, it's possible to modify the registered set. Now, select the mesh you want to replace and choose the desired set item. Adjust the smoothness value. Since the difference between the meshes isn't too significant, I'll set it to 10. Then, click the Make Split Target button. After a short wait, the tool will automatically use Blend Shape to handle the mesh weight areas, based on the set area, providing a clean result. Here we have the result named Head Underscore Target. As mentioned earlier, this data is based on the body mesh, with the head mesh's head area cleanly blended in. As you can see, the quads from the head to the neck have been smoothed out, while the body shape remains the same as the original body mesh. This functionality can be incredibly versatile and useful for various applications. Let's proceed with the eyelid using the same method as before. We'll use the head underscore target mesh as the base this time, because currently it is our final mesh.
Now select the eyelid area vertices roughly and register them as a set. Like before, let's choose the mesh we want to replace. This time it will be the eyelid mesh, right? Next, we need to select the appropriate set item related to the eyelid. Once confirmed, press the Make Split Target button. A nice and clean mesh with the eyelid applied here has popped up. Easy, right? Once you get used to it, you can apply it in various ways. Now, it seems like we've almost finished all the modifications. Shall we compare it with the very first original character mesh? It looks quite similar, doesn't it? Plus, we've added more high poly details. Shall we find some areas that could use a bit more tweaking? Hmm. It seems like we'll need a mesh for the mouth as well. Let's adjust the delta mush parameters again to match the original mouth's shape and volume as closely as possible. All right, let's fast forward the video. Feel free to pause and refer to any part you need. Some of you may be wondering, why go through all this? Doesn't it make the process more complicated or time consuming? However, every character is a unique expression of personality, with each vertex representing a distinct trait. That's why we must avoid any loss of fidelity when to transforming topology. If you value your character, I encourage you not to stop at just running Mesh Warp once. Take the time to compare different parts with the original, identify discrepancies, and perform blending and adjustments. The difference between simply running Mesh Warp once and meticulously blending each part will be significant in the end. All right, we're finally done. Let's compare it to the original character data. Not only is it aligned well, but it's also slightly more detailed due to the high polygon conversion. So, we've learned how to convert your character to a meta-human LOD zero mesh. Once you successfully transform your character to the meta-human LOD zero mesh, the subsequent processes are relatively straightforward. In this tutorial, I intentionally used a cartoon character as a model rather than a realistic one, because converting a cartoon character to meta-human rigging is much more challenging than a realistic one. By practicing these steps, you'll be able to convert any character. See you next time.